Hey and welcome back to my invasion deconstruction tutorial. Today we're going to talk a little bit about mixing. In the last episode I already told you something about the, all the individual sounds and we went over the processing and I showed you everything. And today I will uh, explain a little bit more how the project structure works, how the grouping and summing is set up. And yeah, so let's straight dive into it. Here in the project uh, you can see I have uh, several groups like you have already seen in the last tutorials. Um, basically I structure it uh, always like this. I have like my drum groups, uh, drums group, uh, and then like bass, lead sounds, FX sound and vocals. Um, I do this because I always have like um, a specific processing on each group and uh, it's used for like um, putting the sound in or the different sounds in like one space and create like one sound out of it, especially like for the drums, uh, that's uh, really useful. And uh, here, for example, on the drums group, I um, have a few plugins. Um, the first one is like a parallel drum compression. And uh, you can see I have two chains here. The first is just a dry signal, and uh, the second one is like they're called destroyer and i use slate digital here the monster which is like a, a kind of like a ssl compressor uh, but it's really a, a special version um, from slate digital um, just to like really crush it and what i do is um, i uh, put the attack and the release on the fastest setting and then activate the punch button so it always uh, gives uh, back some attack otherwise uh, with the fastest attack setting it would really crush it and then i just really uh, distort it and uh, then i just mix this signal uh, in parallel just a little bit so it's very subtle but it gives like um, more aggressiveness and yeah we can uh, check it out how it sounds so this is the group in total okay and this is just a sound from the parallel compression i can just increase the volume so you can really hear it Yeah, as you can hear, really hear that it's uh, really distorted and like compressed. And um, if you just mix it back uh, in parallel, you can just add a little bit more thickness to your drums and a little bit more uh, saturation and aggressiveness. And that's the first step uh, I always do. And, uh, and then I uh, use the API 2500 compressor from uh, Waves, um, there's also the UAD version. Um, and uh, then I just uh, add some overall compression. Um, always the same settings, same, the, the drum settings always like use the, uh, the slowest attack, uh, which is on this compressor 30 milliseconds. So the uh, initial transient from the kick will not get compressed, but you kind of compress the signal afterwards. So it's pumping like to the rhythm and you have to make sure that you just compress a little bit like one or two dB, that's uh, usually enough. And um, when you always compress on the on the kick then it uh, will like um, improve the overall rhythm uh, because it focuses it even more on the kick and the kick gets like a little bit more present and and up front so it really listened uh, to the kick and how the kick sounds in the whole mix of all instruments and it just a little bit comes more forward and up front and uh, like everything focuses a little bit more around the kick and it glues everything a little bit together yeah so that's a very common technique. 
Uh, then I uh, used uh, the newfangled audio punctuate plugin. It's a transient uh, shaper and it's really cool. It has a lot of uh, features. So uh, it's basically a multiband transient shaper. And I use it just to add a little bit more uh, transients or yeah, sharpness to the drums. And uh, so this plugin is really useful for that and it has a really like uh, clean and uh, good sound Yeah, so you know, we can really hear that the, the transients get like enhanced and it's it's punchier and uh, afterwards then uh, I use a clipper um, just to uh, to clip the transients um, of the drums and it just uh, gives me a little bit more headroom when I go into the next uh, buses and especially like on the master bus and um, that's very important we always we, uh, we will talk about that uh, later and in mastering as well um, that you have to use uh, clippers or limiters uh, not only on the master bus, you have to use them earlier to get a, a rid of the transients and uh, the sharp peaks uh, so that your final limiter has not worked uh, that hard. And here we just you can see you can see here these red peaks are just uh, the ones which are clipped. It's just like one or two dB, but uh, it adds up. Um, if you just clip like one or two dB on all your individual groups, um, then in the end, uh, you might save like two or three uh, dB of headroom. And that's really a lot um, if you push it into the final limiter, because then the final limiter has to, uh, hasn't worked that hard and you can like uh, overall get the track a lot louder than you would if you uh, don't uh, already limit or clip um, your individual groups and um, you can really try uh, to use clippers because clippers especially in hard clip uh, are really transparent and the problem with limiters is or you have to understand the difference between a clipper and a limiter because the clipper would just clip the sound at the ceiling and just uh, like square it off and um, it has like advantages and disadvantages the advantage is that it will not like uh, weaken the transient so especially on like drums and very transient heavy material a clipper is usually uh, better than a limiter because it will not soften the transient and uh, it will even make the transient uh, like more saturated and even more aggressive um, because just that's how a limiter a uh, clipper works it will just square it off and uh, what happens is it will add saturation um, on the clip transient so the transient will get a little bit brighter and like more aggressive and uh, that's on drums really useful and uh, the thing is uh, with clipping is uh, you just I mean everybody knows that digital clipping doesn't sound good um, but uh, the thing is uh, the question is not uh, if clipping sounds good or not the question is how much clipping can you use uh, with getting and, and getting away with it and as and the uh, thing about clipping is that clipping is really transparent but only on very short transients so you can't clip like a sustained bass line or something or a lead sound it just doesn't work because then the clipping will get audible but if you just clip for a few samples it's uh, not you know, nobody is able to hear it because it's just too short and uh, yeah, that's why I use clippers, especially on the drum sounds, just to get a little bit more headroom. And if the clipping just occurs, like on the kick sounds, for example, um, then it's uh, usually not audible uh, because the kick transient is in itself, it's so loud uh, that you that the little tiny bit of clipping is not audible. Okay, and yeah, we have seen all the individual channels already. It's just uh, like uh, the basic stuff. Um, but I think the most important thing is to choose the right sounds because um, if you have to do a lot of processing, like you have to really boost a lot on your cue, cut out a lot of stuff, 
then maybe you have uh, chosen the wrong sample. So I would say uh, it's always best uh, to fix it in the production and choose the right sounds uh, so that they will sound right in the first place. And then you don't have to do a lot of mixing. You have just to do a little bit of a cue like uh, a low cut or a high cut, just take out some uh, resonant frequencies. But then that's basically it. Uh, I use that all the time and uh, in the first place try to find the right sample which fits into the track and um, then usually the only stuff I do on m m maybe 80 or 90 percent of my channels is just uh, some basic EQ, uh, getting rid of low frequencies I don't need, uh, take out some resonances and then I will uh, maybe play a little bit with distortion and uh, depending on the sound uh, that's most of the times just what i need and um, so you don't have to make it super complicated and add a lot of plugins because uh, if you have to do it uh, usually it's the wrong sound and it makes a lot your life a lot easier if you just choose the right samples choose the right presets or synth sounds or whatever um, and then you have to don't have to do a lot of work okay and on the bass uh, group it's uh, really simple it's just a sub bass and yeah just don't, don't over process the sub bass i've just put the limiter to to put it on the on the uh, maximum volume here so it's not even limiting it's just adding some volume uh, i could could get rid of that uh, if i want to it's not really doing anything then just cutting your, uh, yeah, I'm just cutting nothing because it's just a sub and uh, it's just a sine wave. And um, on the other track here, I have just some distortion. As I told you, usually it's just distortion to, to get the sound as I want to, a little bit more aggressive and then shape it with the EQ so that it fits the track. For example, here I, uh, you can see that I took out the low end because I already had the sub from the Moog. And then I just uh, low passed it because I really wanted only like the, the low mid frequencies um, because I already had some other stuff going on, uh, which is taking the space in the other frequency ranges. And here in the bass group, I don't have any processing because it's just like single channels. And this channel is all uh, here routed into the stereo bus so that it uh, won't get processed um, by the other uh, stuff which, uh, which I have on the other channels. And I will uh, get uh, to that a little bit later. So that gets this signal is uh, sent straight into the stereo bus signal and from there to the pre-master and then the master channel. And the other bass sound here is routed through the uh, uh, basic here sidechain uh, chain. And um, because I have set up the sidechain here on this group, um, just to sidechain all uh, elements which need sidechain. And then I don't have to use a sidechain plugin on every single channel. Uh, on the synth sounds, um, I think I already uh, like uh, explained it. I use a um, multiband compressor here, but I just compress the mid signal and I will leave the side untouched because uh, usually you can have a little bit, uh, yeah, like more dynamics going on in a side uh, signal. Um, but the mids, uh, if, if you compress them, you, you can like bring it up. Uh, bring it in front a little bit more so it's uh, more in your face and after that uh, I use the same concept as I told you uh, to limit the signal here just a little bit uh, it doesn't do a lot we can check it out okay you can uh, see here that the uh, multiband compressor just uh, compresses the signal a little bit and so it uh, pushes it a little bit together and make, make the sound a little bit fuller and then uh, we uh, hit it in the limiter here just to reduce you can see it's just like one or two db maybe or two or three at maximum just to catch the very peaks and shape the sound a little bit so that uh, the peaks are, are not hitting the final limiter 
and uh, you have to do this uh, on all your summing points uh, to check if you have like some peaks there uh, because you have to think about it if you have like five groups and then um, you have like peaks in on one group and peaks on the other group and if you sum these groups together all the peaks will add up and then you get something what's called modulation distortion and it's really nasty and uh, annoying to get rid of because then you have to check from which sound which frequencies are overlapping and what's causing the distortion and it's like really annoying so um, just take care that on all the groups you uh, take out um, the peaks or the and try to avoid overlapping frequencies in different samples um, because then you will get less uh, intermodulation distortion um, especially then when you're mastering a track and that really helps to, to push the track a little bit more into the limit and get a little bit more loudness without um, distorting it too much um, the FX group it's like really basic because um, those sounds are just like white noise risers or uh, some FX stuff and they uh, don't take up a lot of space so um, it's not necessary to do anything here i have just here routed uh, some stuff here in the fx bus and uh, just for the reason that i have here like a um, fx uh, um, rack uh, which does some auto panning and on some tracks i just use it and automate it uh, like into the drops for example and we just auto pan and the effect sound from left to right and if you do that really fast then it will create a very uh, big stereo image and yeah so sometimes i use it and sometimes uh, i don't and uh, otherwise other than that it's just here uh, a low cut so just a safety low cut to get rid of all frequencies uh, in the sub area which may are maybe present in in some samples uh, but usually most of the FX samples are already processed, so they don't have low frequencies in it. But uh, yeah, just as a safety. Here, uh, the vocal group, I uh, don't have to use uh, a lot of uh, plugins here on the group because it's just uh, one channel. So I try to get the sound right on this one channel. And um, then we have uh, all the groups together. And um, then the, the individual sounds are routed into the other uh, um, channels above. And uh, the drum group uh, will get routed directly into the stereo bus. And the reason why is because on a sidechain uh, here bus, I have of course the sidechain set up. And uh, since I don't want to sidechain the kick um, and the other drums, uh, I just route them straight into the stereo bus because the drums are already sidechained already here on the drum bus group. Um, so this uh, group is like already processed how I wanted it. So it gets routed directly into the stereo bus. Um, and all the other groups except the vocals, um, or sometimes even the vocals, but uh, usually um the, if the vocals are like a main element i will um use a different uh, setting for sidechain uh, on this one just to uh, like uh, don't uh, make it pump uh, too much because the vocal should be always in front as well uh, but the other uh, channels uh, other groups like the fx group leads group and bass group is also routed into the sidechain um, bus and here on the sidechain bus i just uh, do um, the sidechain again with the volume shaper and as i have already explained um, the volume shaper is always a better choice than a simple compressor because um, a lot of people just don't get it right with a compressor because they, a lot of people have uh, struggled to understand how a compressor works so it's a lot easier especially for beginners just to take a volume shaper and to draw the sidechain curve here into the um, into the shaper tool and you can easily see what's going on and you can draw shapes which are not possible to get with a compressor and has a lot of advantages 
and yeah so i can really recommend it and uh, for example this plugin also um, has a multi-band feature so that's really cool um and uh, yeah on, on my newer projects i already have improved um, the project structure even more and uh, use for example three bands for the side chain one for the like low and low mid sounds one for the mid and mid highs and one for the very highs and then i just draw in a shape for every single band uh, to just uh, make it uh, most transparent um, so that the sidechain is not pumping too much for example on the very highs because the very highs uh, don't take up a lot of space in the mix because they are like uh, amplitude wise really low and so it's not a big problem if I just use less sidechain on them and so that's really cool and then uh, yeah that's why I would recommend everyone to try it out uh, there are a lot of plugins like from um, the serum guys there's the LFO tool and yeah I think for uh, Nick Romero kickstart and yeah but uh, the volume shaper or especially all the, these shaper box plugins are really cool and they're not that expensive i think think the whole bundle is like 100 euros or something um and they have a lot of uh, possibilities because some of these plugins they have just like predefined shapes and it's like not the best because uh, a lot of times uh, these shapes are not perfectly for your track or your kick so yeah better use something like this where i can really draw in the curves uh yeah all right then um after that all the channels will get uh, summed in the stereo bus and the stereo bus is like if you think about a, like a mixing console you have all the individual groups and then they're routed into um, one bus where all these signals get summed together and what i use here is like as i told you in this concept i use a console emulation from uh, Slate Digital and I use the uh, Brit 4K which is a SSL compressor and just add a little bit of here 6dB of drive and it's like it's it's subtle but it's it's noticeable and it would just add like uh, a little bit of of distortion and um, yeah like these consoles also do and it will make the sound a little bit better and that's like really cool and yeah maybe you can check it out see how it sounds hopefully my pc is not dying if i play everything together yeah so I don't know if it's really uh, noticeable on YouTube. Um, I don't know what they are really doing with the audio, and uh, but it really adds like a little bit of warmth and uh, like glue to the whole mix. So it makes it a little bit more thicker and fatter. And um, yeah, I do a lot of these uh, very uh, tiny. Uh, like uh, steps or processing steps uh, just to add a little bit and um, usually I would also rec recommend everyone to not uh, like especially on on the mix bus or on master bus to don't really like do crazy stuff just add something a little bit which adds a little bit to the overall mix and makes it just a little bit better and if you add a few plugins and every plugin will just make it like one or two percent better then in the end uh, your mix will sound a lot better um, but don't overdo it on the on the really like big groups where all the sounds are summed because um, yeah mostly it will not work if you do like a lot of crazy stuff and especially like a lot of people use uh, the OTT for example on the master bus and especially the Ableton uh, OTT and yeah you can uh, check it out there are several uh, YouTube videos uh, I think I also made one but it's I think it's private uh, about what the OTT really does and um, because the OTT is not uh, transparent um, the filters uh, will fuck up the face and then they will sum the sound together and they, it will uh, it is already uh, really bad on the stereo image 
and also uh, like the different bands are not summed uh, correctly together so uh, it will change the sound and a lot of times um, not to the better um, so be careful with stuff like that and uh, just do what's necessary And here then we route everything into the pre-master. Um, in my newer projects I don't use the pre-master anymore because it's just not necessary and as you can see I have just like a very few plugins here. I could also copy them just to the master bus and in my new projects uh, also uh, I, I just use the stereo bus and the master and pre-master bus the single buses here uh, are not used anymore and I will just route it from the stereo bus directly into the master bus um, but I just did this for several reasons because I wanted to have uh, like because I have some, some reference tracks here and I wanted to uh, have them here in my in my analyzer chain as well so i can see uh, also the reference tracks and uh, my own track in the same uh, like analyzer plugins to compare them um, but uh, i have a new concept for that um, and i will talk a little bit uh, more about that in the mastering video um, but yeah basically that's it um, about mixing uh, just one thing um, I always use um, like effects usually on return tracks. So in my uh, basic template, I've already set up um, a few uh, return tracks. Uh, I have usually like one long reverb, uh, one short reverb, uh, one drum reverb, um, and uh, one or two delays. For example, a ping pong delay. Uh, with dotted eight, eighth notes uh, usually works best and then I have uh, one uh, return track with uh, amp which is like really crushing the sound and um, then if I have a sound which sounds like good but I want some additional distortion or I can maybe automate it throughout the track um, to add or reduce the distortion a little bit um, I would just route uh, the sounds into these uh, um, gr um, return tracks um, because the advantage of this is firstly um, it uses less CPU especially if you have for example the reverb plugins uh, some of them they are using a lot of CPU so if you add a lot of reverb plugins to all your individual channels it will uh, consume a lot of CPU and and then in the end uh, you don't have enough processing power to run the whole project um, and another disadvantage is if you like use a lot of different reverbs with different settings um, sometimes it like creates uh, artificial like space which is doesn't it doesn't sound right because all the elements are in a different space and sometimes uh, that's kind of weird and if you use just like two or three reverbs for a specific uh, use case and then you uh, route all your individual sounds into these reverbs it will just create one space for all sounds and it will sound more coherent and yeah just a little bit more realistic um yeah so i just but i still sometimes i use uh, effects like delays or reverbs um as an insert effect um especially if you want to have a like specific effect for example sometimes on if you have like really big and upfront leads um it's cool to have the reverb as an insert uh, insert effect and then use a side chain on just on the reverb signal and you can have it in parallel and then just duck the reverb signal when the original for example melody is playing and so you have just a reverb playing in the spots between the notes and then it uh, will create a very big um, sound but the reverb is like uh, not smearing out um, the, the dry signal and for effects like this uh, I still use inserts and sometimes also like um, delays with special settings uh, like uh, pitching delays where uh, the pitch is changing it's like getting a, a crazy and weird effect and then I use inserts but for like the main reverb and uh, delay sounds I always use um, return tracks. 
yeah okay um i think i have answered all the questions yeah about the project structure maybe it's this is just as the structure i work in it's just like a little bit a similar to an analog uh, mixing style where you have like a console then you have like different channels and they are routed to different groups and all the groups in the end are summed like on the stereo bus and then you go to the final master bus and uh yeah that's just how i work um but that doesn't mean you have to work exactly like i do you can still have your own concept just try out what works for you and see uh how it fits your style and just your workflow and um yeah i always improve uh my templates and um my signal routing uh for example, in my new project, as I told you, I have a little bit uh, different routing uh, where I don't have the pre-master and master bus here anymore. And I always keep improving the template and I will always find out new ways uh, to do stuff uh, a little bit uh, better way and to improve my workflow. And yeah, so just try it out, see what works for you, find your uh, template or build your template, which works for you, which works for you. And yeah, just keep experimenting. So let's see you in the mastering tutorial. Bye bye.